Hi. Some of you already know that yesterday while I was out walking my dogs, unfortunately we got attacked by a neighbor's dog. Now we knew the dog lived there and the dog has barked at us many, many times if not every day as we've walked up that quiet suburban street in our neighborhood. But yesterday, due to the perfect storm of us coming up the street at the wrong time and the neighbor going to put the dog out on its tie-out chain and just missing the signs in its dog, the dog was able to get away from the neighbor and came charging at us and was really upon one of my dogs before I even knew what was happening. Now the good news is that she's fine and the dog, although he had her uh, in his mouth actually didn't break her skin and he ended up with a mouth full of white fluffy hair but the whole situation obviously was very scary and I wanted to make a video to talk about the implications of why I preach so much that you really do need to train your dog we or just walking up the middle of the street and as many of you know my dogs are very obedient and very balanced and we believe in a permission-based leadership lifestyle in my house but the truth of the matter is is that most of the dogs around us do not live that kind of lifestyle so many people get a puppy or rescue a dog and then it's a project for them for a few weeks or even the first year of the dog's life. But because solutions in dealing with their behavior as they grow out of puppydom and into adolescence and into adulthood, because solutions are not readily available in the training world right now, so many people are just pushing positive 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 only don't say no to your dog don't ever make your dog uncomfortable owners give up they give up trying to be their dog's leader and they end up living with a dog that they simply try to control and manage by always keeping on leash and walking after hours when they run and encounter people, always racing from their house into their car and never interacting with the public with their dog that they can't control. And that's really sad for that dog and it's a really hard way for the owners to live. But yesterday, my situation was a really clear example of what can happen to innocent dogs and people if just one little bit of that system that you have put in place fails. This was not a young dog who didn't know better. This was not a, an energetic five or six year old dog. This was a 15 year old dog dog who was literally maybe 25 pounds at most but it was a terrier breed it was a dog who was bred to chase go after and kill small animals and that's not the dog's fault it simply is who the dog is it's very sad because they've lived for 15 years with a dog that wants to go after every other dog that he sees and yesterday unfortunately got that opportunity it is every prospective dog owner and every dog owner's responsibility to train their dog find appropriate training find legitimate training for the dog that they have in front of them no matter the size or the breed follow through on the training, and maintain the training for the life of their animal. Because they didn't want what happened yesterday to happen. And of course, all of the 
dog owners who would like to feel comfortable just walking their dogs around the street of their town don't want for these things to happen. But they happen all the time. They happen because owners give up. And they think that shutting their dog away in their house or their yard is the answer. And it's not the answer. It's just waiting for an unfortunate incident or many unfortunate incidents to happen. So if you have a dog or you are planning to get a dog, be fair to that dog and be fair to your community around you. Find appropriate training, invest in appropriate training, and follow through on appropriate training. And you'll have a wonderful life with your dog and you will not be in the situation that we and the owners of that dog were in yesterday. We can all do better.